Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. This is a very highly requested video since we made our Spigot 1.14.4 tutorial on how you can actually create a server for that. Today we're going to check out how you can create a 1.8 or a 1.8.3 or a 1.8.7 or a 1.8.8 Minecraft Spigot server. Now if you don't know what Spigot is, it is the system that all plugins on Spigot is built off of. There's other types of Spigot, there's Craft Spigot, there's a uh, What's other types? There's paper spigot. There's um, there's one called sponge. There's a bunch of type of spigots, but spigot is the main one. Spigot MC is the main one. Now there is here's the um, thing you have to do with spigot. You need to get it from Build Tools. Do not get it from any other site. The reason why this is that is illegal. Those are illegal downloads which you are not allowed to use. They could be virus infected. They could be there's so many things that could be wrong with them. So in order to use Spigot and get it legally, you need to use Git for Windows, and we're going to go ahead and do it ourselves. So why don't we check this out? First, you need to download Git for Windows. Download and install it to your computer. It allows for Git stuff to be used inside of your computer. If you don't know what Git is, it's, um, well, it's kind of like... GitHub, um, it's all used called, it uses repositories, it gets stuff from the internet, downloads it, does that stuff. So we're, technically what we're going to do here is we're going to get something from the internet, download it, and um, create the spigot jar without doing anything illegal. So once you download and install this, all you have to do is create a folder on your desktop or something called build tools. Doesn't really matter what you name the folder, don't put any spaces in it, just press build tools like that. Then you're going to download the second link in the description. The first one's GitHub, or the first one's Git. The second one is going to say Build Tools. Click it, it's going to download a file. This Build Tools jar is the newest file on the Build Tools on Spigot. If you get an outdated message when you try to run the command I'm going to tell you to run, just re-download Build Tools and it will work perfectly fine. Um, this Build Tools jar you download, you don't normally need to replace unless it says it's outdated. You can keep it in this folder on your Build Tools folder, and anytime you want to update Spigot, just rerun the command. So you're going to use this in a second. Then, when you are ready, once you have this folder, you're going to right-click and press Git Bash here, which is going to open up this nice little window. And I'm going to make this full screen so it's a little easier to see. We are going to type the following command to go ahead and run our build tools jar. It's going to be java dash jar. And I'm going to go through the different ones that you can use in order to get 1.8, 1.8.3, 1.8.7, and 1.8.8. So by default, you're going to do build tools.jar if your jar is not called build tools rename it to something i recommend renaming it to build tools so you can just copy and paste this and it's easy so if your jar is not called build tools.jar exactly capital b capital t just rename it you'll be fine so we're going to do build tools.jar dash dash rev what this is what this is doing is it's going to say we're going to get a different version of minecraft than the current one which is 1.14.4 now, here's the options after dash dash rev. You can either type 1.8, 1.8.3, 1.8.7, or 1.8.8. Any of these will work, so it depends on the type of Minecraft you want. My experience right now is we're going to use 1.8.8 because it's the most stable, nicest, newest blah of 1.8. So, I'm going to go ahead and press enter with java dash jar build tools dot jar dash dash rev 1.8.8. This command will be down in the description as well. Just click enter. Now, this may take a minute. It's going to go ahead and log in. Now, when you download Git, it may ask you to log into a Git account. If it does, just create one. Not a big deal. If it doesn't, good for you. You don't have to log in. So, it's going to say starting clone of this. Now, what this is doing is it's actually getting the repository from Spigot's Git um, repository. It's going to download those files and it's going to compile the jar on your computer. So this is how they get around um, the the mess of um, the... They went through a lot of mess back in 20... Once one, right before um, 1 1.8 came out, they actually went through a lot of mess when it comes to downloads. They weren't allowed to allow downloads to Spigot and they had to do it through build tools. So this is the only legal way. Again, this is the only legal way you can download build tools. Any other downloads of build tools or any other downloads of Spigot is illegal. You must build it yourself on your computer using Git. Um, if you don't know how, just follow this video exactly and you'll get yourself your jar. If you still need assistance, on our Discord server will be happy to help you. Over the last next few days, we are going to go ahead and release a bunch of these videos that um, will...
have the different versions. So there's going to be a video for 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13. We already made a 1.14, so that's already been released. Now, you can see it's going through a bunch of stuff. It's going to go slow at first. It's not going to go that fast at first. The first time you run this, it's going to be very, very slow. Um, so I'm just warning you. It's going to be very slow at first. If you ever need to update your spigot jar, now 1.8 won't have any more updates unless it's something really serious. So only the newer versions like 1.14 need to be updated as common as possible. I recommend running build tools every week to get yourself a new jar that fixes stuff only if you're on version 1.14 or above. Now here, what it's doing is it's going to actually decompile all the classes inside of Minecraft and inside of Spigot, and it's going to compile them together. So this could take a little time. So while this is doing its thing, we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. Anywhere is fine. We're going to create a folder, and we're going to call it server. We're going to get our server folder here ready for when we get our Spigot jar. Now if you go back to this build tool folder, you can see there's a bunch of files. Don't just ignore them. We're going to leave this running in the corner. I'll see... I'll leave it running in the corner here, and we're going to create something in this server folder. Now, there's two options for this. You can either download this next thing. It's called the start.bat file. You can either download it from the link in the description. It's a mega link. You can download it, or you can just type in the code and sh follow along what I do to um, go ahead and set this up. So right-click. You're going to click New and create a text document. But with this new text document, you're first going to name it Start. It's this little file extension here you're going to change to bat. And it's going to say, this may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes. Then it's going to change to this little icon here. Pretty useful, right? That is pretty useful. Now, you may be asking, if I go ahead and right-click this and press new and create new file, I don't see this dot text after. Here's how you can fix that. Now, a few users actually commented this on my last video, so I wanted to clarify a little. You're going to click this little down arrow. I'll make this full screen so you can see. You're going to click this little down arrow on the top right. You're going to go to view and click file name extensions right here. See, if I deselect this, it's only going to say start. Now, if I try to create a text document like this, it's not going to let me change it from a text document file. So what you have to do is you actually have to go ahead and click file name extensions, and it's going to say start.bat. That's exactly what we want, because then when we right click and press text document, we can change the dot text at the end. So pretty useful, right? Very useful for this. Now, inside the start bot bat, you have two options. You can go ahead and keep it simple, or you can copy it from the description of this video, which is the easiest way of doing it. Now, I'm going to copy this text from the bottom, back our uh, description of the video, and paste it in here. Now, it's going to say a bunch of random stuff here. We're going to ignore this right now. So, let's go through what you can change here and not mess anything up, and what I recommend changing for your own server. So. First, you have, this is where the server starts. Just ignore this. You're going to go and ignore everything above this. This is the title of the window, what you see right here on the top here. That's the title. So in this case, I'm just going to say Minecraft 1.8.8. Now, that's just normally visual. You don't really need to worry about this. Leave this I really know what I am doing, I swear thing, because what that's saying is it's not going to give a warning on startup that says this version's outdated because it's not 1.14. So you're going to ignore this. This is just going to stay here. This is where your RAM is. So right now, this server is going to start up with 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, if I wanted to make this a gigabyte and a half, you would just type 1 in front of here. Now it's going to load up with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, and it's going to start up this jar file, and this is going to be the jar file name. In this case, I'm going to rename this from spigot 1.14.4 to spigot 1.8.8. Now, I'll show you where this comes into handy later when we actually get the jar. What this is doing right here is once the server crashes or something, this is going to ignore this command to run thing down here. Um, what this is saying right here is it's going to say, do you want, so if your server crashes, it's going to say, do you want to restart? Press Y to end for yes and no and just and anything else for no. And it's going to start up if you say Y and it's going to close if you don't, which is pretty useful. I use it a lot. So I'm going to save this code, and it's going to be in our start.bat file. Right now, if I try to right-click it and open it, it's not actually going to do anything. It's going to say, unable to access jar file spigot 1.8.8, because we actually haven't made it yet. It's actually going to place it into the server folder we have here. Now, if we go back to our build tools folder, which mine is right here on my desktop, you can see it's still working. There's still things being worked on here. So it's still being built. They're still working on it. Just leave it. It may take up to 20 minutes the first time, but look at this. Perfect time timing it says everything compiled successfully copying final jar dot jar files now 
Now you can see we got our spigot and craft bucket file. Ignore craft bucket. There's zero reason you could be using craft bucket bucket at all. All you need is a spigot 1.8.8 jar. I'm going to right click and press or I know it's even easier. Just drag it out of there into your server dot jar into your server file. Then you're going to rename it exactly what your name is here. So if I open this up again, see where I said spigot 1.8.8, you're just going to rename, right click, press rename and rename it the exact thing you put inside your start.bat file and click it. Now it's going to say loading libraries. Please wait. The first time it's going to say is failed to lo load elula.txt. You need to agree to let it load. It's going to create these few files and you're going to right click to see lula.txt and you're going to go ahead and change it from false to true and save that file. Then using our nice little Y to enter, we're going to press Y enter and it's going to reload. Now, if you don't have notepad plus plus, that's how I normally edit all these files. You can use the windows notepad or you can download notepad plus plus. I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description as well. It's also available in the top right corner in the cards. So now you can see it's loaded up. It's done loading our spawn. We got all our files. We have our plugins folder, so you can drag in plugins in here. We got your server.property where you can change all the settings of your server. All right here. Very useful. Very useful indeed, right? Now, to connect to it, all you have to do is go ahead and add your server and type in localhost, or you can direct connect. I have mine set up here as test2.bjqdevelopment.com for me, but it would be, it would work perfectly fine if you type this as well. If you type localhost, it would work exactly the same, same server, everything. So I'm going to join, and you can see I've successfully joined my localhost server here. And on my Minecraft, it says noodles just logged in. I'm on my um, local IP. This isn't my IP, so don't try to DDoS me. Um, you can see everything works. If I type in here and I go back to the console, you can see I type there. If I want to opt myself, all you have to do is slash op and your username. Make sure to type op, not s op, because sometimes that's in. And then I'm op myself and I can go into game mode one. So you have a full working game mode and spigot and server and everything. Um, quite easy to use if you want any if you have any issues loading up um, any of these parts of the video just let us know on discord we'll be happy or in the comments below um, you can just leave your question in the comments below and our average response time is less than two hours depending on what day it is if I'm in school it's gonna be a little longer but if it's not it's quite fast of a response time so just feel free to leave your question down in the comments below and I'll be happy to respond to you if you want faster support discords always a way to go just join our discord server and we'll be happy to help you out if you need some plugins check out our plugins as well we have over 40 of them um, a common question is how can I get my friends to join my server well you need to port forward um, this means you open a port on your network to allow people to connect to your IP address in this video I will not be covering that the reason for this is because everybody's router is different your router is the thing your internet uses to connect to the internet it's the thing that your ISP or internet service provider puts in your house to allow you to have Wi-Fi or Ethernet or one of those systems what you need to do is the easiest way to port forward is to go to your router console now normally this is whatever your router IP address is you can find this on the back side of Almost all common routers have this on the back side of the router. So flip over your router. You can see your IP address. You can type in to go to the web panel and a password. You use those to log in and you just follow the instructions to port forward using that. If you have a question about port forwarding, there will be a video coming out in the next few days after the tutorial on how to make all these different Minecraft version servers and everything. There will be a tutorial coming out about how to port forward using AT&T routers. The other routers I don't have at my house, but you can find those online. Just look up how to port forward my router. You, put, you replace your name, my router, with the name of your router, and you can figure out how to load up your server perfectly fine for the internet. Then you just give your friends an IP4 address and you're perfectly fine. I know when I was uh, younger, I had a lot of hard time trying to port forward, so we're going to release a video soon explaining how to do that, what it means, the security risks. And of course, if you don't want to self-host and you want to use a dedicated server or something, go ahead. We recommend Kyra Hosting. Our affiliate link is down in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, if you have any questions, let us know that in the comments. My name is Noodles. I'll see you in tomorrow's video, which is going to be the exact same video, but for 1.9. I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.